This is BMW M's very first hybrid car, the colossal, the huge XM. Join us as we have our first drive with the XM, find out what it's all about, how much it's going to cost in Singapore, and more. Buy or sell your car now with Car Buyer Singapore. And remember to check out the latest automotive content with us. And you're probably wondering what exactly the XM is. Because as you can see, it's a really huge SUV. I like to call it the X8M <laughs> because actually, you know, BMW has a very large X7 SUV. This is the XM. So it's entirely designed by M and developed by M as well. And that makes it actually only the second vehicle in M history to be designed from the ground up. First one, of course, was the M1. So it is an X7 size car, but also a coupe style vehicle, also a very M, very high performance vehicle. So you can see where BMW M is going with this. It's obviously aiming at cars like, you know, the Lamborghini Urus, uh, Porsche's Cayenne Coupe, which also is a hybrid, which brings us to the fact that this is the very first plug-in hybrid in BMW M history. Now, for those of you who are wondering why the second vehicle developed by M fully is actually a hybrid SUV, isn't that a bit strange considering BMW M's DNA? You have to look at the whole picture when it comes to M now. Obviously, the brand is much, much larger than it is. It sold many more cars, well, the most cars ever done in history last year. And now the whole range encompasses not just, um, you know, high performance sedans that it was famous for, and as well as cars like the M2, of course, which we will also test in another story on Car Buyer Singapore. But this forms the top of the range when it comes to SUVs and M, and that's really aiming at the extroverted, uh, high net worth buyer and of course you can kind of tell what markets this car will do well in because you know we're in Arizona in the USA and uh, M says that a quarter of all of these XM cars will be sold here in the USA and another quarter in China with the rest of the world taking up the rest of the 50 percent. Okay so styling of the car, um, big broad bled, dead, bled, gigantic I mean the car is based on the X7. It shares wheelbase for the X7, about 5.1 meters, uh, just like the X7. Very, very big, very wide, and very tall. So actually, you can see how wide this car is. The track of this car alone, not the width, is almost as wide as a BMW 1 Series. So that kind of gives you an idea of the scale of this car. And you can see just how high it is, the front coming up. Uh, beyond my waistline. So this is a really big, imposing vehicle and done in typical M style. Uh, lots of BMW uh, hallmarks here as well. So you can see here the nose, uh, very reminiscent to me of the M4 Coupe. We got a little divot or a little scoop here, the BMW logo. And uh, interesting thing to note that this is the only uh, roundel on the car itself. Uh, later on, we'll look at the back, I'll show you why. Um, we have the BMW Iconic grille, just like the 7 Series. This thing lights up at night, very nice. And the XM badge, which is in gold uh, everywhere around the car. So, you know, showing you that this is really a different M vehicle. It's, uh, it's not the traditional um, <coughs> uh, M tricolor badge that we see in the normal M cars. So the rest of the thing, um, you know, very aggressive in uh, front end, a lot of piano black gloss. Um, the stacked headlights, we got the one section here, it looks a lot like the iX. Another section down here, we've got the spit headlights, which we see on the X7 and the 7 Series. All right, now as I walk up, you can see just how big the side of the car is. Uh, just like the X7, same wheelbase, in excess of three meters, so a lot of interior space, as we'll show you later. But some very interesting design details here. So big uh, gloss, black contrast arches, quite normal for an SUV. You got that XM gold badge again. We also have a very interesting line uh, this is kind of like a plastic detail line going running down the whole side of the car. Very nice. We got a Hoffmeister kink there. One interesting thing to note is that the, the handles are not the flat handles like the 7 Series, but they have this little texture on them, and it has quite a nice touch as well. Uh, this section is black as well to make the car look kind of slimmer than it really is. Of course, typical uh, SUV coupe design hallmarks as we see roof going down here. Uh, not as tall as the X7, not as boxy. Um, very, very big 22-inch wheels. You can go up to 23 inches. Of course, that'll impact the ride quality, which again, we'll see later. But uh, as you can see, it's still a very, very tall car. I think it kind of looks like the X2 times 4. X8, X2 times 4, X8. Yeah, it's big, it's big. All right, now we come to the back of the XM and you can see what I told you about just now. There is no badge here, but there are two round those uh, well, up in the corners of the windscreen. So this is a uh, throwback to the M1. So Coupe SUV, uh, car developed by M totally. That's one nice little touch right there. 
we got our flat headlights, uh, sorry, flat tail light, just like um, what we see in the X4 and the X6 as well. And we've got an interesting stacked exhaust layout here. So that looks pretty cool. Immediately makes it uh, different from the rest of the uh, M SUVs and M cars, which have a side-by-side -side, um, layout for the, the, the tailpipes. But overall, very sporty, very nice. We've got a diffuser here, again, in gloss black. Um, we got the gold XM badge again. And one of the really interesting things is just how kind of flat and uh, almost, well, not featureless, but very stark this uh, rear end is. So very easy to recognize the XM. So we're gonna go on to the interior and drive the car and tell you what we think about it. Okay, here we are on the inside of the XM. Uh, let's just start her up for you. So of course the engine didn't fire up because this is a plug-in hybrid. And um, as you can see, very opulent, very big. This is a huge cabin because this is a huge car. So while uh, the broad strokes are the BMW curved display, as you've seen in the 7 Series and quite a few cars since, um, very nice graphics, um, very nice presentation as well. No complaints there. Of course, you know, fingerprint, magnet, blah, 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 the usual shit for me. You guys are probably sick of hearing it. But the impression I get is one of not just sportiness, but also luxuriousness. So carbon fiber everywhere, everywhere, here, here, and here. You can obviously spec more if you want. Um, but um, also the red leather, the, the leather seats as well, perforated leather seats, very, very comfortable. Um, not a hugely fat steering wheel, yay. Uh, big, tall carbon fiber pedals. We got our M1 and M2 button as well. So um, I think, you know, if you got into this car and you didn't really pay attention, you would definitely think, huh, you know, X7, 7 Series, that kind of um, level of luxury. Of course, the sportiness is also in your face when you do pay attention. And in terms of special touches for the XM, because, you know, this is an M car, besides the usual uh, sporty, 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 sporty bits, you know what I mean. Uh, we've got a little M badge over there. Oh, there's no embed here. Okay, that's interesting. And we also have a very cool textured headliner with lights on the side. So that's not um, not really a panoramic roof, doesn't move, but it's a very interesting little uh, touch that you won't really look out often. But when you get in, kind of you look up and you go, okay, wow, wow, this is a really going hard on the luxury thing. Also, an M badge here on the shifter. So, luxurious cabin, uh, large, relatively easy to see out of. Um, I didn't think I was gonna smack into anything, but this is Arizona where everything is huge. So, um, yeah, smacking into stuff. I think it might be a problem in Singapore, but we'll drive the car first and tell you later. So, let's check out how much space there is in the back. So, this is the rear of the XM. Um, as expected of an X7 based car, it is really spacious, no trouble getting in. Um, and you can see the high quality of the leather, it goes all the way to the sides of. Um, of the cabin actually really wrap around feel right there and the back of the uh bucket well sport seats we have a little tablet uh holder you can chunk in your tablet for rear seat entertainment and you got a usb-c charger right there but you want to see how much space i've got so come on um you know even sitting in the middle yeah who asked you damn birds birds don't exist See how much space I have right here. Really a lot of space, even though I'm in the middle seat. And then I'm gonna come in and uh, oh cool, and then we have our standard issue M cushions. Do you have an M cushion? No, oh, it's perforated too. So if you drool on it, you will dry faster, I think. Okay, so a lot of space here. So uh, I'm just just check it out. Wow, a lot of space. Uh curvy, you know, back roof line, but still. Got quite a bit of space there. I have a huge um, two slots for bottles. Um, yeah, so all in all, again, that impression, not just of sportiness, but also of uh, luxury and upper classness. So pretty cool, a lot of space here. Um, the boot has well in excess of 500 liters with the seats up and, you know, thousand-ish something liters. Uh, the usual, um, what do you call it? descriptions apply if you want to chuck a bicycle back there you probably could maybe because of the styling not as much space as an x7 obviously but still a very family friendly suv but how family friendly do they need to bring out the puke bags we're gonna find out so we just drove the xm uh, on, on the freeway and now we're here on the a roads uh, two-lane blacktop 
So, so far typical uh, what we expected from the car. This car is running on 22 inch wheels. You can go up to 23 as is natural in the modern madness of SUVs. So um, it's an M car, so it does feel that way. It's slightly stiff. We're getting a bit of like jiggle over the, the expansion joints and the little tire snakes. Tar snakes, tire snakes. How many tire snakes are there in my pants? Three. Um, yeah, so so a little bit of a, um, a roaring from the big tires. Again, we expected all this. So uh, as a car that is built very much for the US market, uh, it feels very comfortable on the highway, uh, tolerable on, on the A roads, you know, and I think translating it back to, to Singapore, um, it might be a little bit more bumpy. But again, you know, we've driven cars with 22, 23 inch wheels back in Singapore and it's really down to how much thump you can take. And I think I think the XM will do okay there. Um, on the North-South Highway, you'll probably blitz, blitz the damn thing, really fast, really composed, very comfortable. Uh, so far, the feedback from our passengers in the back, nobody has vomited yet. So the next step is we're going to take it up on the windy bits and, and see how it goes. So um, as with the X... X4, the i4, we have um, sound makers from Hans Zimmer because this car can, uh, it's got about 25 kilowatt hour battery pack and, um, two hours and 18 minutes. when you're not on engine power, it, it is basically fully electric. So that can take you, according to BMW, um, about, uh, why is it so damn loud? That's worse! Oh, freak. Yes, as you can see, I'm very competent at this. So we can go about, well, that's what BMW says, at least 80 kilometers on electric roads. So in Singapore, I think that would be very, very useful. So, you know, you're your super powerful SUV, but you can go to all your friends and say, ha, but it is a plug-in hybrid. Why am I talking like a Frenchman? Um, yeah, so you can have that, you know, uh, electric flag waving if you want to. But of course, the car has a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 as we've seen similarly in the uh, X5, M, X6, M and all those cars but of course BMW has updated that a little bit um, for the modern day but that engine does about 450-ish horsepower while the uh, the e-motor does about 200-ish so 650 combined and of course that is a lot of power but this car is very heavy and has every tech trick in the book um, to help it go around corners and stuff like that but uh, let's just see how it goes. Um, we'll go to M1. E control. All the cops are behind me! <laughs> okay, so 0 to 100 for this car, about 4.3 seconds. Uh, that is quick, but not super quick. Um, maybe you pro true blooded M fans can scream bloody murder here. Why isn't this car faster? Uh, but you know, we're going through the bends here. 22 inch wheels on a large heavy SUV, 2.8 tons, so I can really feel the bumps. It's not terrible, but I think if you translate that to Singapore, uh, which has now has very roads, it probably will be quite busy. You know, we recently did a car with a 23 inch wheel setup and that wasn't very pleasant in the day to day. I think this will be a bit more competent. So, you know, adaptive suspension, uh, adaptive road control, um, rear sport differential things like that so like we said every trick in the book but let's try going through a corner right now how do i do it now in m2 mode uh, sportiest mode and the road here is quite wide but uh, i wouldn't take a lot of liberties with this thing because it's 2.8 tons yeah so right now we're going about um mary cooper's sheriff department i'm going at 50 miles an hour yeah, okay, so uh, we're going pretty fast, but uh, wide roads here, um, cornering is okay. It's not the most agile vehicle, but I feel that, you know, B roads, you would take a little bit of care, a big wide, tall vehicle, but, you know, somewhere like North South Highway, I think it do pretty well. So it's very clear what the XM's forte is, and that is <laughs> unblocking your nose. I mean, um, it's 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 good at the, the grand touring stuff. So we did that review of the M850i earlier uh, in the year, almost last year actually, and it's similar. But that car is obviously more competent than this at the grand touring thing. But this is like you know big, fat, huge grand tour with a lot of image. 
so let's go a little bit more um, very little roll but uh, not the most um, incisive steering and you know we expected all this from the XM because it's a big SUV and you, you can't really get around that you can only bend physics so much so uh, before I make my passengers for off screen sick um, very powerful very fast really competent there's also four wheel steering first time ever in a BMW M and uh, that really pays dividends in the car park we were in just now but you can probably hear the dunk 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 as I cross the line a little bit and go over the cat size so I think out in a place like America it'd be pretty good but uh, for somewhere like Singapore it might be a little bit too bumpy but we'll see so what I said just now about the whole luxuriousness thing is really made quite apparent now that I'm riding in the back so you know if you told me get something for dinner um, if you told me like you know a few years ago that you sit in the back of the next specifically M developed vehicle and it'll be like this I would have gone Meh, get out of here you're talking crap but as I said you know I think what uh, M is going for really is the whole high class luxury high performance expensive SUV thing which explains the million dollar price tag so we're in the back of the car um, you know 22 inch wheels again got the goo -goo 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 -goo. I think the GoPro is doing a great job of of cancelling that out but there's a lot of that little uh, small frequency bump stuff so um, the good news is that uh, the, the big stuff it does it deals with quite well just now when we're going through you know the hills and the mountains and despite the car weighing this much it actually uh, feels quite athletic and sporty and well sprung and nothing's like flopping all over the place which is scary for a driver and even more scary for a passenger so I was in the back during that time and it actually felt pretty good um, it's not a horrendously scary uh, car to be in even though we have uh, well I mean we have a sloping roof line but it's just so big and so tall that you don't really feel claustrophobic at all so when the XM uh, arrives in Singapore, it'll cost about a million dollars and uh, you can blame the government for that because of the recent ARF increase, otherwise it would have been just under a bill. Uh, but um, if you look at the segment, um, it's very clear what kind of buyer uh, M is going for. You know, somebody who would otherwise buy a, maybe an Urus, maybe a Porsche Cayenne uh, Turbo E-Hybrid, Turbo Hybrid, E-Hybrid, Turbo Hybrid, E-Hybrid, Turbo Hybrid, turbo, hybrid uh, whatever the hell you call it. Um, they might, you know, someone, okay, well, a Purusange buyer will probably be up there, but it's just slightly further down, maybe a Bentayga buyer, but someone who wants very, very obvious M styling, and sort of athletic styling, big road presence, well, Audi, Audi uh, RS QA would be a good competitor too, but also somebody who wants to balance out the big freaking engine with the uh, angelic electrification angle so um, honestly when I drove the car I, I paid no attention to how far we could go on electric power because we're trying to get that sound of the V8 but uh, I think it's better that we do that back in Singapore to get a more accurate feel how far you can go but at least you can say you can do electric power and um, I think you know as as an, an M product you must think of M really as uh, trying to take on Porsche, trying to take on uh, Bentley and all those guys and you really can't think of it in terms of old M anymore where they made very very purest cars so if you look at the spectrum uh, last year M launched 8 new cars uh, 3 of them were updates of the 8 series and then we also have this car which is on one end of the spectrum but on the other end of the spectrum we are also in Arizona to test out the new M2 which is on the other end of the spectrum very purist, very light, very compact uh, manual, manual uh, rear wheel drive car so if you wonder where M is going, it's going there but it's also going here the million dollar high performance luxury SUV segment so what do you think of the BMW XM, the styling, uh, the concept and uh, all that let us know in the comments you've been watching Car by Singapore Please like us so we can continue to exist. Although I will go home now and contemplate my existence.